What gives a DEI program the right to come in and try and alter the nature of things to create a quality of outcome? So, That's been tried. That didn't work. That was called Marxism. What has happened? Is he watching Jordan Peterson in his spare time? We have been observing, marveling at, appreciating, and really enjoying the transformation of Oprah's doctor, Dr. Phil, right before our eyes. You'll remember we commented on his appearance on The View. Uh, we'll put the link right up here in the corner if you didn't see that segment. It's amazing. There's Dr. Phil on The View, uh, basically schooling all the women on The View about the realities of the border issues right now, because he actually went and looked at it and explained to those women exactly the truth about what's happening on the border. Also, you'll remember the exchange that he just recently had with those pro-Hamas students from University of Michigan. And now there's more, Dr. Phil. On his show late last week, he had a DEI expert on diversity, equity, and inclusion who was there to clear the air she was there to explain exactly how critically important DEI is. And well, Dr. Phil was ready for her. Some demographics come to the table and have to overcome racism, unconscious bias, misogyny. Uh, and so how do we help level the playing field for everyone? Okay, so that means you're trying to create a quality of outcome. Mm -hmm. How do you create a quality of outcome uh -huh. when people well, aren't you... the same? You're right. Some people are shorter. Some yep. people are taller looking over that fence. They can't both play in the NBA. You can't create a quality of outcome. What gives a DEI program the right to come in and try and alter the nature of things to create a quality of outcome? So... That's been tried. That didn't work. That was called Marxism. Oh, man. I don't think he and Oprah are speaking anymore, right? They can't still be friends. There's certainly not, but Oprah doesn't produce this, does she? There's no possible way. What has happened? Is he watching Jordan Peterson in his spare time? That's fantastic. And by the way, I love that this DEI person, he says, so you're you're really trying to ensure equality of outcome. And she's like, mm-hmm, that's right. It's like, so do you not know anything about the history of the Soviet Union? or communist China, or Pol Pot in Cambodia, and Vietnam, and North Korea, and Venezuela. Do I need to keep going? Yep, we're all, we're here for the equality of outcome. But it gets even better. He did an entire segment on the speech police, on, on wrong think, on Orwell in 1984, all wrapped up into one charming idea canceled words and phrases. And my favorite part of this entire segment that we're about to watch, and sit back, we're going to enjoy this. It's a few minutes long, is the reaction from his audience. Because listen, you and I, we live in this world all the time. We consume this kind of alternative media that we're able to stream for you via town hall and on, on Rumble and other various outlets that we have so that we see exactly what's going on in our kids' schools. We know what's going on at our workplace with the quarterly DEI training and the list of things that we're allowed and not allowed to say. We've seen what the military has instituted with some branches of the military rethinking whether soldiers should say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir, things like that, right? But most of these people, most normies in this country, most people who are just worried about making sure that their grill is functioning and that they can make it to their little kids, uh, their kids' little league soccer game or what have you, they're not as plugged into this stuff as we are. Rush used to call them... Uh, uh, low information voters. And it wasn't meant to insult them. Actually, I'm jealous of low information voters. I would like to not be plugged into this stuff all the time. And I'd probably have a happier life. I want you to watch the reaction of the people as they're hearing about these banned words and phrases for the first time ever. Take a look. I, I put together a list of things that just drive me crazy. Like one up here, you can't say mom and dad anymore because some people might come from a family where there are two dads or two moms. And they said, you can't, because you, we don't want a letter coming from school that says, dear mom and dad. Did you ever get a letter that said, dear mom and dad? Of course not. We don't have enough problems. We've got to think about that.
you can no longer say America is the land of opportunity because some people don't feel like it's the land of opportunity. Is it just me? In fact, you can't even say America. I'm not kidding. You can't say America because that implies that America is better than the other countries in the Americas. You can't say tone deaf. You can't say blackout or brainstorm. This is considered racist. We're going to have a brainstorming session that would offend people that have brain injuries. You can't say peanut gallery. Are we offending peanuts? <laughs> when you're talking about a car, you can't say, well, it's got a blind spot because that offends people that are unsighted. All right, I'm gonna let more go on. I just wanted to interject here, just because I'm enjoying the delivery so much. It's like somebody gave Senator Kennedy his own show, right? Except, except a little, frankly, a little more local yokel than Kennedy. Uh, and I did the, my favorite thing, I don't know who his producers are, but they're doing a great job over it, Dr. Phil. Um, I actually know people who have been invited on the show from the right. We're never invited on any of these shows, man. And Dr. Phil truly does have a production team that is interested in what we have to say. And I'm considering it. I'm considering it. Anyway, I whoever's producing this, the visual is so important, right? Because they understand not just television and streaming content, but um, social media as well. What's going to grab your eye? And the image of Dr. Phil walking in front of this giant screen, like it's in AT&T Stadium down there. With the, the, this, is, this is Jerry Jones's big Jerry vision down there for the Cowboys. And he's this, like, he looks this big. And Dr. Phil's a big dude. He looks this big and he's, he's dwarfed by these giant phrases that have been canceled. And right there, grandfather, mom and dad. I think it's hilarious. And he's doing almost a stand-up routine with these things. Because he gets that it has to be mocked, mocked with righteous outrage, but mocked nonetheless. That's the lesson of my friend Andrew Breitbart, righteous indignation. You better be indignant. It's righteous indignation, and they deserve to be laughed at. All right, uh, back to Dr. Phil. I'm pretty sure they know they're blind because they can't see. I'm not judging them. They just are. We now have to look at people that have said, well, since we can't say that, we'll tell you what you can say. And so they've come up with inclusive alternatives, like unschooled. These are stupid people. You can't say minorities anymore, so these are historically excluded. You can't say... Let's brown bag it today. Like bring your lunch in a brown bag. You can't say that anymore. That's from the University of Washington. I, I kid you not, they have a list of things that you can't say. So what they say is lunch and learn. Unintentionally at leisure. You ain't got a job. Does anybody want to guess what people who menstruate are? The National Institute of Health, instead of calling someone a woman, they're birthing people. Now I can just imagine calling Robin a birthing person. <laughs> the Lancet says bodies with vaginas instead of women. Now, doesn't that seem dehumanizing? Yes. Yes. Calling somebody a body with a vagina? It does. And uh, and, it, and it's great. Again, I told you the reaction from the audience is the most important part here because I'm pretty sure I know I've seen all of those, haven't you? We, we've known about this. It's been coming. We're the only ones who have been talking about it. And that's why the people are surprised. That's how this happens. Do you want more, Dr. Phil? All right, we got one more Dr. Phil. Let's do one more Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil uh, also recently, as I mentioned, went down to the border and he saw exactly how bad things were. And he directed a little ire toward our vice president. She's a birthing person, by the way, a person who menstruates. Uh, she's our border czar, too. And Dr. Phil had a message for her. Since President Biden took office, more than six million illegal immigrants have crossed Texas southern border in just three years. And what about our vice president, Kamala Harris? Did you know she is actually this country's immigration czar? Well, guess how many times she's been to the border? Once. Yeah. 
And of course, when she went there, it was a photo op and she didn't do anything about it. Here's the only problem with Dr. Fauci. He's getting so close and he's getting it. He's understanding it. But there's one piece of the equation that he still needs to put together. He's got to find that last piece of the puzzle so it all is clear to him because he's acting like Kamala Harris is incompetent. He's acting like uh, the Biden administration and Mayorkas. They, they don't know how to fix the border. They don't know what they're doing or they're goodly in, they have good intentions, but it's just not, not working out well, right? Uh, no, the last thing that Dr. Phil has to get, and maybe he understands it, but he doesn't, doesn't have not reached the point where he can articulate it or not, the real truth of the matter is everything that's happening on the border right now is exactly what Kamala Harris and Alejandro Mayorkas and Joe Biden, if he's even aware, it's exactly what they want. This is by design. We know that now. There's no doubt about it. This is exactly what they've planned. And when Dr. Phil gets to that point, boy, now, now we're talking. But, but good on you, Dr. Phil. Welcome aboard. You're real close. Let's go.